Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I recently purchased a couple of fashion magazines. The first I've purchased in a very long time and it got me thinking about 2022 style trends. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you some of the trends that I like and then some of the trends that I really, really, really don't like as well. The way that I'm judging this is definitely based on my personal aesthetic, but it's also based on what I feel like could be timeless and could be worn with style once the trend is over. What I consider a bad trend would be something that just feels impractical or it just doesn't feel that stylish once the trend is over. Because trends very quickly find their ways into the shops, I hope this video is helpful in deciding what to avoid and what may potentially work. The very first trend I'm talking about is the column of colour. Usually I see a bright colour in either a long dress or a suit set and I've been seeing this everywhere online. This is an incredibly bold and striking take on colour but the reason why I like it is because I feel like a column of colour has always been a very flattering way to dress. Wearing one colour from head to toe is very elongating and I feel like because it does look good on the body it can have some timeless appeal. This is where I feel like the trend can go one of two ways. If you choose a color that you love and it does look good on your skin tone, then it's forever going to be a piece that just suits you and you're gonna feel beautiful and look good in it and that will always be in style. Whereas if you choose a color that is color of the season but you don't necessarily love it, then that's where I feel like it may not have the same longevity as the earlier example. So the best way to do this in your wardrobe, I feel like it's just to look at what you already feel good in in your wardrobe and then to base your decisions on those colors and find something that genuinely works really well for you instead of being swayed by the color of the season. If you find that your wardrobe is pretty neutral, this might not be a trend that you really need to buy into because it might not be your style. Whereas if you love color and you just can't find the exact colors that you like, now is the perfect time to embrace it because every single brand out there is doing color, color, color. Final verdict is if we choose a color that genuinely suits us, a column of color can be such an elongating and flattering way to dress. And because of that, I do like this one. The next trend I'm a little bit on the fence about and I'm talking about platforms. So the only thing I have in my wardrobe that features a platform is this boot. You can kind of see it has a small platform at the front. I've had this for a while now, so it's not like a super new thing in my wardrobe. I feel like the appeal of a platform is that it makes the heel more wearable. Even for my shoe here, I gotta say, this is a very, very comfortable shoe because it's not a very high heel, but we've also got a platform at the front that just reduces the um, heel even more. So I like the practicality of that and for someone who's petite, finding a comfortable heel is always, always a good thing. That being said, I can't say that I really love the aesthetic of a platform. I feel like it doesn't necessarily elevate or make an outfit feel more chic. It's more of a fun and cool shoe that you would wear. A reason why I may not love the aesthetic of a platform is because I wore them a lot between I feel like ages 8 and 15 and I associate it with my style back then. So maybe that's another reason why I don't necessarily love it aesthetically. If I was to buy into this trend, I would definitely get something a little bit more on the subtle side for my personal style. I mean, my personal style is not very bold, so that's probably why. I also wouldn't splurge on these shoes because no matter whether they're from the high street or high end, I don't feel like these shoes look very luxe in the design of the style. Overall, I'm on the fence about this one because I like the practicality but not the aesthetic. If I like the shoe and it came with a platform, it wouldn't be a deal breaker, but I'm also not going out looking for a platform shoe. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree or disagree with any of these trends. It is just fashion, you know, it's just such a light whatever topic and I just love to hear other people's thoughts as well. The next trend I want to talk about is a trench coat with a twist. I feel like I should love this, but I actually really, really hate it. For me, the point of reimagining a classic is that you don't take away from the fact that it still needs to function as a classic. You just give it a little bit of an update so it feels more stylish, more modern. I used to like the idea of reimagining the trench coat, but unfortunately what I've seen in shops has just made me really hate this trend. If you do it right, a reimagined trench coat should look something like this. If you do it wrong, I feel like it ends up like this. And the reason why I don't like any of these trench coats is because they're no longer classic and it just feels like a really useless piece of clothing 
because we can actually create these styles with a classic trench coat and not have to buy this additional item of clothing. For example, if we love a trench coat and we also love plaid, it is so easy to just wear your trench coat and pair it with some plaid in your wardrobe. A blazer, a pant, a shirt, you know, and you can recreate this look. Or you can recreate what is almost this look. And it just feels like a waste to take a beautiful trench coat and make it so trendy as opposed to it being such a versatile item that you can match with everything. These styles feel incredibly pointless and I feel like it's just the brand trying to sell me something when they know that I may have a trench coat already. So they're trying to present the trench coat with a twist and trying to convince us that we need it when in fact it's so easy to create these looks in our wardrobe just by mixing and matching some of our clothing. So hate this one, absolutely annoys me, um, but let me know your thoughts. Maybe there is some appeal to it and I'm just not seeing it. Another trend for 2022 is the maxi skirt. And this is one that I can completely and fully jump on board with. I feel like as someone petite, and if you're petite, you might also find this, that wearing a super short skirt feels quite elongating, wearing a long skirt feels elongating, and the most unflattering length is when it hits me at the knee. So the fact that long skirts are back in, I love. I wear a lot of midi skirts and I actually have a video showing my whole collection, which I'll try to link down below. But even my midi skirts tend to fall pretty much at maxi length. And this is something that I feel like is pretty much what I already wear. And I'm just so happy to see more of it around. The reason why I find this flattering is that if a skirt ends at your knees and you're more petite, it can cut you off there and just make your legs look shorter. Whereas if you wear a skirt that is long, especially if it's like high-waisted as well, it can really elongate the bottom half of you, make your legs look longer, and generally that makes you look taller as well. This is a skirt that I had from Joseph from last year, and I feel like this always makes me feel taller because of the longer length. And also it has these vertical lines, which also helps um, elongate the leg. This is another skirt that is a maxi length. I often roll down the waistband a bit to wear it more as a midi, but maybe now I'll try to play with the maxi length a bit more. Even if you have a dress that is longer, you can definitely turn the dress into a skirt and wear this trend without necessarily adding something to your wardrobe. The trend with skirts right now is definitely about the extremes. To go very, very short or to go very, very long. Very, very short, I feel like is quite elongating, but not practical for my life. So going very long just feels like the one that makes the most sense for my style, for my lifestyle, and I just find that it's flattering. A very basic piece of clothing that has made a bit of a comeback is the white tank top with the scoop neck. I don't like this item, and the reason why I don't like it is because this type of piece looks awful on my body shape. I feel like if you're taller and maybe had some curves, this can be a really beautiful item on you for that very effortless look. But for me, I always feel very sloppy and underdressed when I'm wearing something like this. The shape of this neckline just completely does not work for me. And for me, it doesn't look effortless. It definitely just looks sloppy. Instead of going for this white tank top, I feel like whatever we have in our wardrobe is probably a better option, especially if you've chosen a neckline that really suits you. For me, it's always a higher neckline, whether that's halter or just anything with a higher neck always looks a lot better than this scoop neck um, tank top. I don't always like to dress for my body type because sometimes I find it too restrictive, but this is something that very obviously looks bad on me. So definitely going to avoid this and just go for something that is a more flattering neckline. The next trend that I want to feature is what an article called Horse Girls. And I thought it was a terrible name, but I don't have a better one. It's basically a style based on the equestrian aesthetic. And I also feel like it's a branch of the old money aesthetic that I've been seeing on TikTok. If I was to break down this look, I feel like it's focused on very understated luxury and also on heirloom pieces that look like they were being passed down. So I think about pearls, I think about very luxurious jackets. I'm grouping this equestrian trend with the old money aesthetic and I'm kind of talking about it all together. But for me, the way to do this trend right is that you pay attention to quality and you purchase things with the intention that you'll wear it for a long time. And it assumes that you're very picky when you're selecting your pieces. The wrong way to do it for me are the TikTok try-on hauls where you purchase 10, 15 items and you create like a whole new wardrobe for this vibe. The pieces of clothing in this aesthetic, for example, riding boots, a slim pants, a tailored jacket, a bit of plaid, pearls, 
are all things that if you buy well, you can really have it for forever. And that is the appeal for me of this aesthetic over just attaining the look um, in like a quick way. This aesthetic for me is definitely not about speed. It's about very slowly over the years kind of building up the wardrobe basics and getting that quality look that the old money aesthetic consists of. I also feel that this aesthetic is not all about buying luxury, but just focusing more on choosing well. And the person that comes to mind for me is Audrey on YouTube. Her wardrobe looks so beautiful. And even when she's wearing something from Zara or Mango, it looks stunning because everything has been chosen with such care. That is something that I definitely really love about this aesthetic. For my own personal style, I feel like this aesthetic is a little bit too preppy for me, but there are definitely elements of it that I really, really love. For example, like a tailored blazer, of course. The final clothing trend I'm gonna feature before moving on to some bag trends is Y2K. Y2K I put last because I feel like it is the worst of the trends, but I also felt like it was very obvious that it wasn't going to be, you know, a crop top, mini skirt, low rise kind of gal. I'm gonna start by saying that there are people on social media that I've seen who do look quite nice in this aesthetic. Whether we're talking about younger girls in more trendy styles or influencers in those like little Mew Mew skirts, there are some people I think who do look nice. But just the thought of imagining it for myself as someone, you know, petite with the low rise mini, traumatizing. And also, I don't know where I'm going with these clothes. This is obviously something I'm not wearing to work. I'm not wearing this on the weekend either. This just definitely seems like a trend for younger people who are maybe at university or for people who are maybe more creative in their jobs that can wear things like this one. Instead of just hating on the low rise, I do want to explain why I don't like it. If you're wearing a high rise pair of pants, your eye immediately goes to the waistband, which is the waist area and is quite a flattering place to draw attention to. Whereas if you're wearing low rise, it accentuates the hip, which is usually the widest point on our body. And it also shortens the look of where your legs look like they start. And because of that, it both is widening and shortening and on my hides, that's just something that I don't want. So I do avoid low rise and I usually try to avoid mid rise as well and stick to my high rise. Needless to say, I won't be participating in the low rise or the Y2K trend. And I will say that if you're interested in a slightly lower rise, what I recommend is going for a pant that can be worn low rise, but also can be hiked up to be worn um, high rise. In the stores, I've seen so, so many pairs of low rise jeans, and this is a trend that I just really, really can't um, partake in. I think it's really important to keep in mind that beyond the aesthetic, everyone also has a different body shape, and on different body shapes to me, this might be something that could work. But on me, never. Very quickly today, I also want to touch on handbags. I am a huge handbag and accessory person. I feel like they can do so much to change and transform an outfit. So wanted to talk a little bit more about bags as well. A trend that I really love in handbags is this new woven bag trend. The bags can be woven with different types of yarn, string, textiles, or it can be like a woven leather design. But this woven bag, I just think is so incredibly chic. I have my Longchamp bag here in this really bright red color. And I just am in love with this bright pop of red. And I think it looks so nice in a lot of more neutral outfits. If you're wondering how in the world do you use that bag without having everything fly out. I do have a dust bag on the inside. I basically treat this as the lining of my bag and put everything into here and it just turns into a regular bag that's very normal to use. If you're crafty, I'm sure this is something that you can DIY yourself. I have a couple of aunts who actually are very, very good at making bags like this. Um, I didn't want to trouble them, but they would definitely be able to do this and I feel like quite easily because I've seen a lot of their very intricate designs. There's another brand on Instagram that makes these really stunning bags. The brand name is Alien Nina. I'm definitely saying that wrong, but their bags are really beautiful and it's kind of like a slightly chunkier version of this style. There's honestly so many on the market right now and beyond it being just very cute, I also like that for travel, it's so easy to fold this into nothing and bring it with you. I'll obviously pack the dust bag flat, this flat and it just becomes so teeny tiny. And if you get one of the other styles, you can put it flat in your suitcase, 
Compared to like a straw bag, it is so easy to carry around. A handbag trend that is making a bit of a comeback is the super size handbag. And I wore this when I was younger, I did. But I can honestly say that I don't think I'll be doing this anytime soon, unless it's for practicality reasons. I have a very big Farrah Lepage tote in my wardrobe, and it's huge. I use it for travel, I occasionally used to use it for work and to carry things around with me, sure but for actual style reasons, I feel like I'll just stick to my mini bags because as someone short, as someone with a smaller build the big bags just look completely um, overwhelming next to me as someone who also likes a little bit of an oversized outfit wearing a small bag is one of the ways that i like to bring proportions back into my look and not make everything look too oversized if i'm wearing my oversized clothes with my oversized bag i feel like everything will just like fall apart so this is another trend that i won't be taking part in if you're not petite i feel like this might be a really fun trend to see come back because it is more practical but just for me not quite right i always mention this but when i'm using a mini bag i often hold the rest of my belongings that don't fit into a separate tote that i just hold on to but the mini bag is still the item that's on me and part of the outfit so it still feels more balanced than reaching for just the tote bag in itself. A very quick mention before finishing up today's video, I wanted to talk about the 90s shoulder bag and honestly I'm a person who's very very slow to trends. This has been trending for ages and I've only recently just embraced it. It does take me a while. I've had this bag in my wardrobe for I feel like a couple of years now but I recently really just fell in love with it again and instead of wearing it as a crossbody bag which I used to do when I wore this bag, I now wear it as a shoulder bag. I didn't have to buy anything new to take part in this trend, but being able to take part in this trend has been so fun because I've been wearing the crossbody style for so long. It's just nice to change it up for the shoulder bag style. A lot of trends for me go in cycles. They come, they go, they come back. And sometimes you might be able to find those trends already in your wardrobe. So you don't really have to buy anything to partake in trends. For a lot of the trends that I like, for example, even that old money aesthetic, if you have some pearls, whether they're real or fake, taking them out can mean that we're taking part in this trend. Same with the bag, just taking a crossbody, making it into a shoulder bag. Even as a fashion vlogger or even YouTuber, whatever you want to call it, I'm definitely quite slow to trends. Often by the time I get a trend, it's already almost out of style. That amount of time usually helps me decide whether I actually like something or if it's just trendy. I've been doing this long enough to see trends come and go all the time. So I'm usually not in a huge rush. Those were all the trends that I really like and all the ones that I really dislike. Thank you for spending your time with me in today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I would love to know down below what trends you like, what trends you don't like, whether you agree or disagree with any of these thoughts. Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, I would love for you to go give it a thumbs up down below and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content from me. Have a very lovely week ahead and I'll see you next time.